Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about how to mount your uh, works made on paper, your artworks made on paper, whether they're paintings or drawings, whatever, uh, how to mount those to a wood panel. So uh, this is something I've had questions about quite a few times over the years. Uh, you may have seen me do this process like in a vlog or something, but I haven't ever made an actual how-to video. So we're gonna talk about all of the supplies, everything that you need, the steps that you have to go through, all of that, um, everything that is needed to mount your paper artworks to panel. Before we dive in, I want to thank my patrons for sponsoring this video. This video, as with all of my weekly videos, is sponsored by my patrons. They uh, support this channel financially. Pledges start at just a dollar a month and make a huge difference. And that is what enables me to hire a video editor, which is what makes it possible for me to put out videos week in and week out, even though I I am a full-time freelancer with a schedule that uh, really varies. So if I were just doing this on my own without your support, uh, I would only be able to publish videos occasionally whenever I had time or space in my schedule. But uh, because I have your support, because I have the support of you patrons, uh, it is possible for me to hire this video editor, this wonderful video editor, Meg, who um, edits the videos and then we can put them out uh, every single week. So thank you to all of you. Uh, and uh, if you want to keep up with me on a more daily basis and see what I'm working on, I would encourage you to go check out Instagram. I'm at Kendall Hilligus. I share um, the place where I most commonly share client projects and what I'm working on, personal projects. I like to interact with you guys a lot on stories. Um, so check it out over there and come and follow me if you haven't yet. And without further ado, we are going to jump right into the video. Yay! So for supplies, you're going to need a panel. I like to use these uh, cradled birch panels. So it's a panel of birch, but then on the back, it has a little frame that kind of stabilizes it. As you can see, I already have a little sketch on this one. I just uh, use this for a demo in a Skillshare class. So that's why there's a little tracing of a leaf, but it's not gonna be visible once I mount the piece of artwork on there. So the second thing that you need obviously then is a uh, finished piece of artwork, something that has been completed on paper. It can be um, really any sort of paper. This is a pretty heavyweight Reeves BFK. And it's also really helpful if the artwork is a little bit larger than the panel. So this is just slightly, this is an 11 by 14 panel, I believe, and this piece is just slightly larger. You can see here that there's a little edge of paper that's hanging over. And what that's gonna allow me to do is have a really nice clean edge once it's done. If you've already trimmed it to the exact size of the panel, it's harder to get it to line up well. And then you can sometimes end up with places on the panel where the artwork isn't covering, where the paper hasn't covered. So um, I recommend sizing a little bit larger than uh, sizing the artwork a little bit larger than your panel. Or if you're custom making a panel or ordering a panel, ordering it just like an eighth of an inch anywhere from an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. So then you'll also need a, a nice large brush. This could be a foam brush or a paint brush, uh, just something that's uh, nice and wide for spreading around. And you're gonna use that brush to spread around the clear acrylic medium. This is what you're gonna to use to actually stick the, uh, the paper to the panel. You don't particularly need any sort of brand, uh, it just needs to be an acrylic matte medium. I think I got this online somewhere a few years ago, and this isn't something I do all the time, so I actually go through it fairly slowly. And you'll need a spray bottle for wetting down the back of your art. And you'll also need a brayer now this is what you're gonna to use to roll the bubbles out of your piece. And you'll need a super sharp X-Acto. This one that I'm using has a brand new blade on it. If it's possible, I would recommend using a brand new blade. A little sandpaper block. You can also use just a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a, a piece of wood. And then a plastic bag or a, a piece of plastic wrap that you can use to lay the piece down on while it's drying. Two more things you'll need uh, that I'm not gonna show here because they're kind of large are some really heavy books for weighing down the piece once you've gotten it attached to the panel. And then a surface that you can cut on for when using the X-Acto knife. All right, so first up, I'm gonna put down my plastic bag. The reason we're doing this is that 
Once we flip this over and uh, the paper is underneath it and it's weighted down with books and it's drying, it is likely, it's possible, and even likely that some of the medium will seep out around the edges. And if it's just directly down on a piece of paper or on your surface, it can actually get stuck to that and can rip. So uh, having a little piece of plastic underneath it just makes it easier to pull it away and have everything um, go smoothly. You can dose the medium out in a cup if you want to, but I find it's uh, just as easy just to put a little bit right on the surface. Always start with a little bit less than you think you need because it's a pain to get it off if you put more on than you need. And hopefully you can see from this angle where I'm wetting the panel, where the panel has a medium on it and where it doesn't. Obviously you need to get the entire panel covered. So you just wanna work in layers until you have the piece pretty evenly covered. It should be thin enough that it's not like dripping everywhere, uh, but thick enough to where you can see it kind of sitting on the surface a little bit and it will give the panel almost like a milky finish. If you notice any drips on the edges, just use your fingertip to wipe them off. All right, now to prep the artwork, you're gonna flip it over and use your spray bottle and just give it a couple of squirts. You don't wanna douse it, you just wanna dampen it. Some people will completely douse the piece. I think you just need a little bit, and I've even done it without the water and still gotten a good adhesion. But uh, I feel like in general, you get a smoother, nicer, more even adhesion if you use the water. I'm gonna move my panel back over. And this part is a little tricky. You just have to kind of eyeball it. So lightly center the piece on the panel. And then I like to kind of run my fingers up the sides so I can feel how much of an overhang there is. And I use that to judge whether or not I need to move it. This is another reason why it's easier to have a little bit of extra around the edges. If you're trying to get this perfectly lined up uh, with a, a piece of paper that's the exact same size as the panel, it's just really challenging. Now, once you have it more or less centered on there, this is when you're gonna use your brayer. And to use the brayer, you just start in the center and apply a steady, gentle pressure and roll out to the edges. A brayer is a tool that's used usually for printmaking. So it can be in the printmaking section of your art supply store. You can also find them online. And just take your time and really go over the entire piece. Try to get it nice and smooth. And it's preferable to use something like a brayer over something like your hands or just pushing all of the air bubbles out because you can get a really nice even, um, you can get a really nice even finish. And then also you're not gonna have to worry about spreading oils from your hands onto the piece, especially if it's an unsealed paper piece. All right, I like to bend down sideways and look and see if I notice any air bubbles. I don't see anything. I've just noticed that I've gotten a little bit of the acrylic medium has kind of dripped out here around the edges. So I'm gonna uh, take a minute to clean that up. All right, and once you've gotten all the air bubbles out, you can flip over the piece and place it face down on the plastic bag. And I'm gonna use a rag to wipe around the edges, wipe any uh, excess off. And the reason it's preferable to do this now as opposed to after it's dried is that uh, it will just be a lot to sand off. You can sand it off after it's dried, but it will it'll be a lot of work. So it's just quicker and easier to do it this way. And then for weights, I like to just use some uh, portfolios, some full portfolios and really any other heavy books I have on hand. All right, now I'll let this sit for a full 24 hours and dry. After the piece has been weighted and had a chance to dry, I'm just gonna take off the weights, the books, and I'm gonna carefully lift it up, gently peel off the plastic wrap, As long as you've kept things pretty neat and tidy, the only places it should really be sticking will be the very edges of the paper, which you'll be trimming off anyway. 
I'm just looking really closely at the edges here just to make sure I don't see any air bubbles peeking through. Um, also want to check, be sure to check all of the corners. Basically, those are all places that you might see um, a little bit of paper that hasn't fully adhered, but everything on this piece looks really good, looks nice and sturdy. So my next step is just to let it dry uh, face up for probably another um, six to 12 hours, depending on the size of the piece, the thickness of the paper. Just since it's been face down on plastic, I wanna make sure that uh, it can get completely dry, completely set before I trim off the edges. All right, so this has had a chance to cure for a few hours and I put my cutting mat down on my table and I'm going to flip the piece over all right, and now I'm gonna use my brand new Super Sharp X-Acto to trim off this little lip of paper here. And uh, one of the reasons it's so important to use a sharp blade is because you don't wanna actually press really, really hard. If you're pressing really, really hard, it's very easy to, um, to nick the wood itself, to trim the wood panel itself, and you just wanna be applying enough pressure to trim off the, uh, the little extra paper, but not cause any nicks in your uh, panel. Also, if you have a dull blade, when you get to the end, sometimes it can make the paper tear, which can show up on the front. And you can see I'm pressing down on the back of the panel with my hand to keep things nice and sturdy. And I'm just lining up the blade with the very edge of the board and just kind of letting it glide down. All right, so at this point I have flipped it back over and I'm just examining the edges to see uh, where there might be some little bits of unevenness or some things that might need to be sanded down. I'm gonna pick up the piece and hold my sanding block right here. And I'm just gonna very gently run it across the edge. This is a, um, a medium fine paper that I'm using. And then I'm gonna flip it and go back the other way on the same side. You wanna avoid doing just a back and forth in the center because that can wear down the center a little bit. You're just mostly trying to take off the top edge of the paper and give it like that really, really smooth finish so it's just as smooth and level as the board. I'm gonna work my way around the whole piece doing that. So at the end, you will end up with a nice, really, really smooth, even edge. So there is the finished piece mounted on the birch panel without any air bubbles, nice smooth edges. At this point, you can either just hang it as is. Uh, you can also put it into a float frame, a glassless float frame. Um, typically what I would do is take it outside and do some sort of a spray varnish on it, a matte spray varnish, a matte spray fixative that would have some UV protection since it's not gonna go behind glass. Um, some people also like to paint the edges of the panel or rather than framing it, they like to paint the edges of the panel. You could do that too. But uh, basically this is a really nice way to have a work that's made on paper function a lot more like a work that's on canvas where you don't have to put it behind glass um, and it can feel uh, more like an original piece of artwork, the original piece of artwork that it is, as opposed to feeling like a print that you have uh, behind glass, which can be a challenge for works made on paper. So there it is. Okay, so that is it for this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful for you. Um, if you have questions about this, this specific topic of mounting artwork to panel, leave those in the comments and I will, no, yes, yes, leave them in the comments. <laughs> uh, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, if you also, if you have other specific technique videos or practice videos, other artsy type videos that you would like to see how to's on, you can let me know um, those ideas in the comments or you can uh, message me on Instagram. Thank you again for watching. Thank you to Meg for editing. Uh, I hope everybody has a great week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.